From the outside, this machine appears to be a well-preserved museum exhibit. But as you enter it, you begin to see the years of wear and tear it has endured from training astronauts at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The number of crews that, that sat in there and did their training and, and learned on it, it was just invaluable to the space shuttle program. During the space shuttle program, NASA had three trainers built. Two crew compartment trainers, or CCTs, and one full fuselage trainer. All three made to replicate the space shuttle and prepare astronauts for more than 100 space missions over the past 30 years. Even John Glenn trained on one in 1998 before he became the oldest man to fly in space. Astronauts like Mike Foreman remember when their training began on the CCTs. Oh sure, first time you see the shuttle uh, cockpit, you think, wow, there must be 2,000 switches, circuit breakers, dials, buttons, and uh, it is intimidating at first. The space shuttle was probably 10 times more complicated than any other airplane that any of us ever flew. So, you know, it was a challenge. And that's where the CCTs came in. Astronauts would train in the CCTs over hundreds of hours to familiarize themselves with the flight deck. It takes some practice, yeah. uh, and that's why we do training. And that's, that's why a mock-up like this is important, uh, because you want to make sure that if they had an emergency and they needed to get out, then there wouldn't be any problem with them being able to do it. So we practice it in a little bit more controlled environment but still a relatively realistic environment. And just like the space shuttle, the CCTs are now retiring, leaving only memories for Mike Foreman. I'll always remember the space shuttle. That's the vehicle that took me to space, you know, and, and for as long as I'm associated with the space program, to me, you know, its core vehicle is the space shuttle. But soon, one of these trainers will give people near Dayton, Ohio, a closer look into NASA's historic space program. I always say, you know, the second best thing about going to space is coming back and telling people about it, you know, telling the story, sharing the experience with others. And, and by putting these out there in, in the public sector, it, it allows, uh, you know, people to kind of experience a little bit about what we experience. The National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, is welcoming one of the CCTs to its new home later this summer. It, it's just fantastic, you know, for a, for a space and an airplane geek like me. That would really be a neat place to visit. The first CCT built, known as CCT-1, has trained astronauts since 1979 and is scheduled to arrive at the museum on NASA's Super Guppy aircraft. Reporting for Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Public Affairs, I'm Staff Sergeant Stephen Conklin.